Hey guys, my name is Damas Rizzoli, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the motion blur tool in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well and staying creative. So this is another video to the quick Photoshop tutorial series that I'm making. If you haven't seen the previous Photoshop tutorials I've been making, make sure you guys check them out. But yeah, let's just continue on with the series and today we're gonna to be covering motion blur. So I've also already made a video in the past on how to use motion blur for panning shots, which is horizontal motion blur. But today we're gonna to be talking about vertical motion blur and even diagonal motion blur as well. The reason why we wanna use motion blur is obviously to add a bit more motion to your photos and movement. So it brings it more excitement and draws attention to the viewer. This technique is something I love to experiment with all the time and it usually works best with photos that are perfectly straight. And I've already made a video on how to perfectly straighten your photos, so go check that out too. So yeah, let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how to use the motion blur tool. So I've already opened the photo in Photoshop after already editing it in Lightroom. I use the guided upright tool in Lightroom to straighten the photo, so that's why there are these two white triangles in the corners. So let's first try to fix this up. Use the polygonal lasso tool to select around these triangles and then right click and then click fill. When this menu appears, make sure content aware is switched on and then click OK. The Adobe AI should be able to fill these in automatically most of the time. So once that's filled in, next I crop the image to 4x5 ratio because I'll be posting it to Instagram. Click the crop tool, make sure 4x5 is selected off the top and then delete crop pixels is turned off and then crop to the composition you want. You can also hit O while in crop mode to toggle between different guidelines to help with the composition. Next, we're going to be isolating the subject, in this case, the Empire State Building. To do this, duplicate the base layer by right-clicking and then duplicate layer, and then with the polygonal lasso tool, select around the building. This doesn't have to be perfect, but try to zoom in and select it as best as you can. If you make a mistake, you can hit backspace to go one step back, and use controller command plus or minus to zoom in and out. Once you have your selection, you can then tidy it up by adding or subtracting to it. To add, hold shift as you select, and to subtract, hold Alt or Option. Take your time with this as the cleaner the selection, the cleaner the final result will be. Once you're done with selecting, click the layer mask button to isolate the building. So now we've done that, let's work on adding motion blur to the background. First, duplicate the background layer again, and then with that new layer selected, go up to Filter, then Blur, then Motion Blur. When this menu appears, you can play around with the angle and distance of the blur, as well as previewing it on the image. In this case, I went with an angle of 90 degrees and distance of 250. I felt that if I pushed the distance up too high, you lose the texture of the background as not many lights were on that night because we rode the helicopter on a Sunday evening for this photo. If you're going for a diagonal motion blur, you can adjust the angle to suit as well. I recommend picking the same angle as the background that you've chosen. Next, I changed the opacity of this layer to about 75% so I can see some of the original buildings through it. Now with the background motion blur added, I'm just going to stretch it and position it into place to fill the whole background. This is a personal choice and it's completely subjective, so it's up to you how you want to do it for your images. To stretch it, hit Ctrl or Command T to get the free transform tool, and while holding Shift and Alt, pull up the top center node to stretch the top and bottom at the same time, or just Shift to stretch one side. You can also move the entire image up and down to get the look you're after. Take your time with this and adjust until you're happy with the overall composition. Finally, I added a few adjustment layers to tweak the tones and colors of the motion blur layer. To do this, click the adjustment layer button on the bottom right, and then I selected brightness contrast. Then right click that adjustment layer and click create clipping mask, so you're only affecting the layer right below it, which in this case is the motion blur layer. Adjust the sliders until you're happy with the look. I then also added a hue saturation adjustment layer and a color balance adjustment layer to finish it off. Once you're done, click file and then save, and you should jump back into Lightroom for a final color grade and you can export. All right, so for this example, the principle behind it is pretty much exactly the same as example one. So the first thing we do is to crop it and pick your composition. Next, I duplicated the background and then isolate the cityscape, which in this case is the subject. To do this, we will use the polygonal lasso tool and just go around selecting all the buildings. Again, take your time with this and try to be as clean as you can. If there are lights like this, you can just skip past it and we can just add them back into the image later at the end. Okay, so now we've got the cityscape selected, click the layer mask button to isolate it. Next, duplicate the background layer and then go up to filter, blur, motion blur, and in this case I went for a maximum distance of 2000, and again angle 90 degrees. So same like before, use the free transform tool to stretch and position into place in the background. 
Once you're happy with it, let's move on to adding the reflection. Click on the background layer and using the rectangular marquee tool, select the water part of the image. Then right click the box and click layer via copy. Move this layer to the very top of the layer list. Then again, go up to filter, blur, motion blur. And I also did 2000 distance for this. Next, select the water part of the image and then hit the layer mask button. So that will be the only part visible. And then click that link button to unlink the layer mask from the layer. This will mean that when you pull and stretch the blur, the layer mask won't be stretched and will remain in the same place. So like before, using the free transform tool, stretch and position the blur that is above the water. Make sure the actual image is selected and not the layer mask. Once you're happy with the composition, grab the paintbrush tool, click the layer mask, make sure the color is black and right click to pick a small size with hardness zero. And then paint the top edge of the water so it blends in nicely with the city. You can also click X to toggle the paintbrush color to white. And if you start painting again, you'll start revealing the blur if you make a mistake or you want to tweak it some more. This is the advantage of using a layer mask. I then use adjustment layers again with clipping masks for both the motion blur layers to adjust the tones and colors. In this case, I also selected the levels adjustment layer to add more textures to the lines. Next, I noticed that the cityscape was blending in a bit too much with the background. So I thought I should apply a shadow behind the cityscape just to separate it a bit from the background. To do this, duplicate the layer with the cityscape on it and place it below the actual cityscape layer. Then convert it to a smart object and rasterize it. So we just get a flat layer with no layer mask. Then go to image up the top, then adjustments, then hue saturation, and then drag the lightness slider all the way down. This will make this layer fully black. Next, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I went for an amount of 200. Finally, I changed the opacity of the layer to about 40% just to make the shadow look less obvious. This is usually my process for creating shadows and definition behind subjects. One last thing we're going to do here is bring back those lights like I said earlier. And to do this, click on the Cityscape Layers layer mask, then click the paintbrush tool, right click and make the size really small, and with a white brush, just lightly click on the parts with the lights. To help with this, adjust the background motion blur layer to 50% just for this step, so you can see where you're painting and then you can switch it back to 100% when you're done. That's it, save it, and then I do a final overall color grade in Lightroom and then export. Okay, last example, and this is probably the easiest one. So I've got my main image here open in Photoshop, and I've also got another second image that I wanna to stack together with the main image. The reason why I wanna stack these together is because I wanted a light trail on each track. I shot both these images using a tripod, so I already lined up perfectly. So all I do is to copy the second image by selecting all, and then copy and paste onto the first image. Once it's copied in, I change the blending mode of this layer to lighten. You can apply this technique to your long exposure shots to stack lots of image together to make it more full. All right, once that's copied in, I add a quick adjustment layer and adjust the brightness contrast slightly so that all the top layer is affecting is just the trails. I did this because the second image seems to be much brighter overall than the first image when I applied the same Lightroom color grade. All right, so next you wanna hit Control Alt Shift E or Command Control Shift E to merge all the layers onto its own layer at the top. And then use the crop tool to pick your composition. Once you're happy with the crop, then duplicate the layer and then again go to filter, blur and motion blur. Again, for this one, I did angle 90 degrees and distance 2000, but you can play around and pick what you like. Next, I applied a layer mask to this layer. And then with the layer mask selected, click on the paintbrush tool and use a medium to large size brush with hardness zero and start painting black towards the bottom of the image. The look you wanna get is to make it seem like the buildings are blending in and getting warped into space. So you wanna blend it in nicely. Keep alternating your paintbrush color with black and white until you get the look you want. I also suggest using an even larger brush and painting it further away so you just get that nice faded look. Take your time with this step. Another thing you could do is you could play around by drawing a box and then painting in that box black to remove the motion blur from different parts of the image. This is how I created this edit right here. Just different layers of the same motion blur masked out differently with different opacities. But I'm not going to do that for this image, just thought I would show you guys. All right, so next unlink the layer mask from the layer and then stretch and position the motion blur just like we did in the previous two examples. One last step that I do here is to create a shadow behind the building on the right just to give the image more layers and depth. To do this, I first create a new layer at the top and then draw a rectangular marquee just to the side of the building. Next, I grab the paintbrush tool, pick black as the color, and then with a small to medium sized brush with hardness zero, just paint in a straight line going downwards. 
you can hold shift while you draw to make it a perfectly straight line. I then adjusted the opacity to about 50 to 60% and then added a layer mask and started painting black on it to mask out the parts I don't want. The goal here is just to make the shadow look realistic. And that's it. Save and take it back to Lightroom for a final color grade. So now let's look at the before and afters. If you guys do try these edits out, I would love to see it. Tag me on your Instagram posts and stories. Alright guys, I hope you found that tutorial useful. Let me know in the comments below if you've been liking this quick Photoshop tutorial series, what you want to learn next, or if you have any questions. If you like this video, make sure you drop a like, and if you want to see more coming soon, make sure you hit subscribe. As always, thanks so much for watching, and remember to always push your creativity to the next level. Bye!